Notable fantasy headlines that we're looking at for Week 16. The big story is uh, Jalen Hurts is expected to miss the Week 16 game against the Cowboys with the strained shoulder. So we'll talk about Gardner Minshew and the replacement option there for Jalen Hurts from a fantasy perspective. Lamar Jackson, according to John Harbaugh, not necessarily a guarantee to play in Week 16 against Atlanta. Ryan Tannehill will play against the Texans if anybody's going to trust him. Jets have a lot of injuries, the big one being that Mike White will not play. It will be Zach Wilson once again Thursday against the Jaguars. Jeff Wilson could return against the Packers. Khalil Herbert was just activated off of IR. And Nathaniel Hackett saying that Cortland Sutton, quote, potentially could be avail could, quote, potentially be available uh, with the hamstring injury as the Broncos take on the Rams on Sunday on Christmas Day. Let's talk about the big story, Dave, with the Eagles. So Jalen Hurts is going to most likely miss the game. You see where he's been among quarterbacks this season. Just an absolute star, fantasy MVP. And it's going to be really, really unfortunate not to have him in the fantasy semifinals for those people who got there, especially if you had a bye, expecting him to come back and play in that big showdown against the Cowboys. So Gardner Minshew takes over here, and we've seen him play, for the most part, relatively well when he's had to start two games last year. 22 fantasy points against the Jets in Week 13, 18 points against the Cowboys in Week 18 in what was a meaningless game. But we know Gardner Minshew in his history, he's been a pretty good fantasy quarterback. Can he be that type of player once again against a good Cowboys defense? If Lamar Jackson's out, Gardner Minshew's going to be a top 12 fantasy quarterback for me this week. And it's really just a testament to this Philadelphia offense and how good they are. And it's got a little bit to do with the Cowboys defense too. They're not the same unit that they were even three weeks ago. They've had some significant injuries. That pass rush, it's awesome. And usually that would be a problem for Gardner Minshew. But think about that Eagles offensive line. It provides that great big wall. And if Minshew's going to have time to throw down field, I think he could be okay. Of all the quarterbacks that we'll talk about adding this week, he's the one that's got the most upside. So that's the one I want to go after first if I've got Jalen Hurts. I would actually start him over Lamar Jackson. I'm concerned about the knee. He wasn't playing well before he got hurt. And I think it's going to be a good game for J.K. Dobbins, not necessarily for Lamar Jackson. So I think mm -hmm. Minshew has a higher ceiling uh, in this game. So the receiving core here for Philadelphia, they're getting Dallas Goddard back. He was activated off of IR today uh, to be active for this game. A.J. Brown. Devontae Smith, Goddard, are we trusting them with Minshew? See, this is where I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth because I like Garner Minshew, but I wasn't putting him as a top five fantasy quarterback. I said he'd be top 12 if there was no Lamar Jackson. I'm downgrading these guys. With A.J. Brown, think about some of the big plays that he's made lately and those downfield throws. Those are throws I'm not sure Gardner Minshew can make with the same type of accuracy that Jalen Hurts has so far this season. So instead of him being like a top three fantasy receiver, he's a top 12 fantasy receiver. Devontae Smith has a double whammy because not only have we gone from Hurts to Minshew, but Dallas Goddard's back. And we saw it earlier this year that his numbers weren't quite as high when Goddard was on the field. So he's going to be more of a number three receiver. And Goddard, I love. There was the one game late last season when Minshew started. Goddard went off. He had a monster game. I would imagine that he's going to get a lot of targets from Gardner Minshew. Must start top five type of fantasy tight end. Miles Sanders is uh, potentially going to get the squeaky wheel treatment. Nick Sirianni saying that, quote, we've got to get Miles the ball more. We've got to do a little bit more called runs. That's on me. That's on me. So we could see the run game maybe be a little bit more prominent. I just think with the receivers, the thing that's the benefit is not as many designed runs called. So we could get more targets for those guys because Jalen Hurts would obviously uh, take the ball and run. Gardner Minshew not going to do a lot of those same plays. Uh, you mentioned Lamar Jackson. that You would start him over Minshew. Uh, this is what John Harbaugh said, that he declined to say whether Jackson will return this week after missing the last two games with a knee injury. So if he plays, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a number one guy for you. I'd be a little bit more cautious, but probably going to start Lamar Jackson. Great matchup against the Falcons. In terms of Mark Andrews, Dave, where are you at with him, uh, whether it's Huntley or Lamar Jackson this week? Uh, if it's Huntley, I'm out. If it's Jackson, I'm in. And it's as simple as that, taking on the Falcons and their defense against tight ends lately. It's been pretty bad, so I'm going to count on Mark Andrews to go ahead and be that number one target for Lamar Jackson as this offense tries to find its passing game. John Harbaugh talked about how the offense needs that right now. He's good with the run game. We are too. We love J.K. Dobbins, but they've got to find something in the passing game. I think they work on it, and they're successful with it against the Falcons. Ryan Tannehill is going to play against the Texans despite dealing with the ankle injury. I don't think many fantasy managers are going to trust him, but keep an eye on Traylon Burks. He could return from the concussion, and that would certainly think, make things a little bit better for Ryan Tannehill. So this is a game really where Derrick Henry should absolutely dominate everything for, for, the, for the Titans' office and try and snap this four-game losing streak. So that's been really the Achilles heel of this uh, Houston defense. And the Titans, if they can lean on Derrick Henry, take some pressure off of Ryan Tannehill, a desperation play more in two quarterback and super flex leagues. All right, the Jets have a lot of injuries that we're looking at for Thursday Night Football. So we got the word today that Mike White is going to be ruled out. Zach Wilson will start that game. Zonovan Knight's dealing with an ankle injury, but he's not on the injury report, although Robert Sala said earlier this week that he's going to be probably questionable 
for this game. That probably doesn't make sense. He's going to be questionable. Not probably going to be questionable. He's going to be questionable according to Robert Sala. It's then, doubtful your sentence <laughs> about him being probable of questionable. Yes, sense. and we should just get out of this topic. Uh, the wide receiver core that we're looking at, the injuries there. Corey Davis is expected to return from the concussion, but Denzel Mims is dealing with the concussion as well. So let's start with the running back situation. Yeah. Do you feel confident in Zonovan Knight against Jacksonville if he plays? Uh, I mean, low end number two type of running back. He's going to be in that same range as Cam Akers. I might even start him ahead of Cam Akers, but it's not somebody who I'm very excited about and then in terms of if he's out do you like michael carter if for whatever reason knight does not play with the ankle feels like even more of a desperation play at running back because carter i don't think is going to be the only running back in that backfield this coaching staff has never trusted him to be a full-time guy i don't think they're about to do it now against jacksonville and what basically equates to a must-win game in terms of zach wilson he's taking on a jaguars team that's allowed 21 fantasy points or more to six straight quarterbacks and he's coming off a 22 point day against the lions can he have any sort of similar success fantasy wise in this matchup he actually can because of how jacksonville's pass defense has played for the majority of the season and you mentioned how many fantasy points they've given up lately and i just i wouldn't watch what he does because he's going to make some extremely terrible decisions with just the watch football. garrett wilson he'll just have all the, the but you like know. what he was doing yeah. last week is he's just throwing up these huge bombs and it's the receiver who camps out under them jumps makes the catch it happened multiple times and that helped him get to 22 fantasy it, it helped him get over 300 yards so it, because of who he's playing with and because of the opportunities that are there he might be able to find his way to 20 fantasy points again. But that being said, I'd still take the safety of Brock Purdy well ahead of Zach Wilson. And Minshew, much uh, better way quarterback ahead. as well. Yes, I would agree. Uh, in terms of the Dolphins' backfield here, we have Jeff Wilson, according to Mike McDaniel, could have played Saturday against Buffalo. They held him out as a precaution. So if Wilson does return, Raheem Mostert's coming off a monster game with over 150 total yards. How would you anticipate the Dolphins' backfield looking against the Packers? I think Mostert will be the lead guy. I think he's earned it. He played well against Buffalo. He kept them in the game. They, The Dolphins know they need to continue to run the football and have that change up in their offense, take some pressure off of Tua Tungavailoa. And we really haven't seen Jeff Wilson play well. I mean, we haven't seen him play in the last couple of games, but it's been about a month since we saw him play well. So he got to Miami, got off to a really great start, seemed to displace Mostert then, and then it flipped. I think Mostert will be the one that has the best chance to get 15 touches against the Packers. But it goes from uh, maybe a top 15 running back in Mostert to more of a borderline flex play if Wilson's there because they're going to split in some capacity and it could be just bad for Mostert if he's losing some of those high-level touches, especially like you said, Dave, when we first saw Jeff Wilson come to Miami. Bears backfield is going to look a little bit different. Khalil Herbert's expected to return against Buffalo. What's the impact on David Montgomery? It's going to take Montgomery off the field significantly more than where he's been over the past few weeks without Khalil Herbert. That goes without saying, but I still think Montgomery's earned the lion's share of the reps and the high value opportunities. We're talking about passing downs, we're talking about inside the 10 yard line, the chances for him to score much greater for Montgomery than they are for Khalil Herbert. Plus it's going to be Herbert's first game back, so I doubt he's going to play 40% of the snaps, which is right about where he was living before he got hurt. So Montgomery's still a top 12 type of fantasy running back. Khalil Herbert, someone you just want to keep on your bench. Yeah, I'm not really worried about it this week, but we could see what happens coming out of this week, especially if Montgomery, for whatever reason, does struggle. But he's been absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. for the last four games without Herbert on the field. And then Jerry Duty's been great without Cortland Sutton on the field, but Nathaniel Hackett's saying, quote, Sutton will be potentially available. I just, it's, it's a very tricky phrase. I think um, you got it, though. Yes, so if he does... I hope Cortland Sutton stays away, that being said. Okay, so you don't want to see Cortland Sutton. Don't want to see him. He's an awesome guy. He's a good receiver when he does play, but this year it hasn't really worked out when Judy's been on the field. Let Jerry Judy just keep on rolling. And you know what? The person who it might benefit the most is Russell Wilson, who had 30 fantasy points in his last game. That was actually encouraging for Russell Wilson. That's somebody else that you could potentially start. But if Sutton's back, I think it ruins Jerry Judy just a little bit, lowers his upside, and I'm not going to start Sutton anyway, even if he does play. One other note, which we'll get to when we talk about the running back waivers, is Jonathan Taylor was uh, is expected to be placed on IR. So that's something we were waiting to find out. But according to at least one report, that's where it's headed, that he's going to have a season ended uh, by being placed on IR with an ankle injury.